there are some projects on this build that feels like once we get to that point is a huge step forward, even if it really doesn't move us that much further forward. It's just, you know, you kind of like think about it is when I get to this point, you know, it must mean that we're doing well. I know that I had that feeling about a year ago once we started doing our hatches and gel coat was a big issue of why we haven't gone forward with that along with temperature. But just like that, now that things are warming up again, we can start to move forward onto this next thing, which I'm so excited about. And that is cutting out what is going to be the long windows in each side of the hall. So these are what we'll be turning our attention to next because part of that is still going to be staying as kind of the frame of the window from the inside. So we need to make sure that we have it fared and shaped properly, especially since we're hoping to start priming soon because we've just been going through all of the last little areas in here so we can do like one big hole at a time and not have to worry about doing any more fairing, just get all the primer on. Anyway, that means that we're ready to move on to these two. So Matt is going to pick up some oscillating blades for our tool because we're down to our last one. And when he gets in, we'll start that. But for now, I get to go back to fairing the shower space. And of course it would turn out that as soon as I find a way to get my hair curly in a way that I like, which means keeping a lot of moisture and only washing it like once or twice a week, I'm about to do some of the dirtiest, sandiest projects ever. So time for the spray sock to go on. The very back wall of the shower here, we haven't really touched since we sprayed it with Colby a while ago. The inboard side, you can see, has gotten a ton of work, but the rest of it is looking pretty good. I've gone through the past few days with our guide coat, sanding it off with 80 grit. And so I've been able to just go fill little spots like this. This area is pretty uneven, so I coated the whole thing. I'll get ready to sand it today, but what really needs to get worked on is the upper area there. Again, trying to keep this line. And it is basically the only thing keeping me from finishing the shower. And then behind me, the main head is almost done too. So, owner's hole, almost ready for primer. Jessica. What? We gotta go. What? There's a meteor. Pack only what you need. How long do we have? Only an hour. That's just enough time to plug in the Ukraine portable power station. Let's get to it. I should be able to go from a zero to 80% charge in just 50 minutes, which gives us just enough time to juice this up. Can it power my rice cooker? We're gonna have to live off dry goods from now on. Yes, it's going to power your rice cooker. And it can power the kettle too, because we're gonna need clean drinking water. Can it power my phone? My followers need to know what's going on. Yes, Trixie, you don't have to disappoint your followers. It's got two USB and two USB-C plugs for you. Is this little Ugreen charger gonna be able to power my 1200 watt hair dryer? Cause you know, we could have to repopulate the earth. And even if it's like the last guy around, uh, I don't want ratty hair while I'm doing it. Yes, Joyce, in U-Turbo mode, it can do up to 2500 watts. So I hope this thing's as much of a miracle as you think it is. Matt is back now and he's going to teach me what I need to do to cut out the windows and I will be suiting up because it's going to be super dusty with fiberglass flying everywhere so time to get prepped. That's why it's not my job. <laughs> oh totally not the area I was thinking. Oh, really? What were you thinking? <laughs> oh, the host? <laughs> yes, I was so excited. I was like, we're going to let more light in. <laughs> no, totally not that. Oh, bummer. Well, eventually we'll go through and do the lower ones. No, it's the frames here. Oh, uh, okay. 
we're getting close to the point now that we can start finish priming this area and then eventually paint. Well, what we're going to do is get rid of this gel coat. Not really get rid of it, we're just actually gonna cover it because we had to glass here, tape here, tape there, tape up there, a bunch of different places along the front that we need to do as well. For the interior of the boat, it actually, it's already a beautiful surface. All we need to do really is prime it and then we can paint it and we'll have it match then everything instead of having to try to gel coat and go through and polish it out and all that kind of stuff. So to do that, we need to get to the stage that we can get some um, primer on here and get this painted soon. This lip is a molded lip. It's not to actually retain window glass or anything like that. It was just sent this way because it was easier. It was going to protect this nice pretty sill that they made. So when you see when we got cords going through here, we had straps running through here, all that kind of stuff. It's pressing on this lip instead of actually on the sill itself. Well, we need to cut this lip back. So we need to get to that flat surface because the windows go on the outside and press against this. They're adhered to this. They don't actually go in this recess. So we'll go to the outside and kind of explain it a little bit more. So this whole thing was basically on a big plug and had this little raised section in it that made this outside trim here. Um, what we need to do is just cut flush with this edge around here all the way around every single one of these windows which is going to take a while, but luckily we got a flush cutting tool. This works really well for this. So, let me get the mask on real quick. Do it here, just keep this blade flat. In the yard in Vietnam, they actually just use a grinder and grind this flush, um, but that makes an absolute ton of dust, and so we're gonna try to eliminate as much of that as possible. So that's why we're gonna use this. Jess, the fun part is gonna be, when you get up into this area here, mm -hmm. is to keep this so it's flat against this surface and not tilted that way, because we don't want to dig in yeah. too far into this side. Following it all the way around, and again, the same way. I have to admit, I'm genuinely bummed that we're not working on the windows I thought we were originally because that would really change the look. But this is something that has to get done anyway and I feel like it's not gonna be too much longer until we get to that phase either. So at least we can get these areas ready for the acrylic that will go on there. toasty inside but it's still these things that it is only may and it's only gonna get worse throughout the year we can't use power tools in the middle of the night here so i guess it's a job that may as well get done now just a little over halfway for this first one and so far the lines are looking good but i will have to take off these straps that were originally holding the cabin top before it had this to rest on to make sure that they didn't you know take a tumble down there and because the Oops. Uh, back end of the oscillating tool here probably can't really uh, kick up to get around this corner. I'll probably end up just coming this way around instead. And I have suddenly realized how many windows are actually on this boat. This is going to take me all day, I think, to complete this. that the heat and the sweating is worth the suit so that I don't have to go to bed covered in dusty, itchy fiberglass tonight. Oh, 
almost finished, just giving it a second to cool down because that corner started to feel a little melty and my blade didn't really want to go through it. So almost done with the first one though. very good and pretty even sides not so bad bottom I think it's gonna need a little sanding and touching up but got one down and only nine to go It's just crazy how much taking out those extra flanges opens up the space, makes it look so much lighter. I'd always sat and wondered how much of a difference it would make from previously knowing that they would come out, you know, if it would seem like the windows were any bigger, and surprisingly it does. Look at that. Look at that view. It is huge. Time to tackle these last two forward ones, and I think it's going to be a day for me. all the way done with this front one but the cabin top seems to be coming down in a way that I can't move the oscillating tool from the outside and Matt doesn't want me working from the inside up so we'll have to see maybe those two parts will have to wait until we can actually lift the cabin top up again and then I have the inner portion of these front windows too but the rest of it is looking really good it is quite a workout my hands are totally vibrating right now from doing this for like two hours so I am really enjoying the openness it's adding to the salon too. I mean, it always felt big, but this just makes it seem huge now. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good morning. You ready to go get blessed? Hi. We're just about to jump onto Gala Mine with Captain Francis. And I think they've actually got a breakfast in there, but we're going to kind of enjoy the morning and then in about 45 minutes, all of the boats are going to go through the channel and get blessed. So at least the rain held off for this part. are just about to start so we're having a little like breakfast casserole lots of eggs and sauces delicious because this couple always makes sure you have a good time on board and then I think Pete and Alex are gonna get there and start talking soon and then we get to go under the fire hydrants which of course is the most fun part of being up here. My partner and one of the owners of the marina he's done a fabulous job and I'd like to give the responsibility over to him now. <laughs> the blessing of the fleet is a tradition that began centuries ago in the Mediterranean fishing communities that is meant to ensure a safe and balanced sea. Today we celebrate the blessing of the fleet so that the captains and their crew are blessed with a safe and bountiful season the Chesapeake Bay.
As we passed through the channel leading to the Chesapeake Bay, our boat's name was called out and the captain and his crew were given a blessing from the local pastor. And then it was time for the fun. Passing under the spray of local fireboats, sucking up bay water and spitting it back out in a glorious arch that covered us from side to side. <laughs> the ceremony on this day was going to be short, with impending rain coming, but we managed to keep ourselves happy and dry for the rest of the procession, especially when some surprise champagne was heading our way. The champagne toss. Someone has an extra bottle of champagne, just toss it on over. But I will this one. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Now that Jessica's cut out all the, or well, some of the frames, as you can see, this one's still flopping in the uh, uh, wind there. Let's talk about what we're going to cover this whole section with. Calculated, we're right around 108 square feet. It spans from roughly this area to all the way up here. And same thing down both sides and around the front. When you add that all up, it's actually considerable weight. With acrylic, we're talking 300 and something pounds. We need 10 to 12 millimeters, so we're still trying to figure out exactly what's um, gonna get used here. And that, of course, is going to make a big difference in weight if I can lessen that down to 10 millimeters. I have taken a look at that, and we've also looked at tempered glass. Tempered glass, we can bring it down to 8 millimeters. Um, we looked at laminated glass, which is tempered on both sides. That we can get down to 7 millimeters, which does actually lessen the weight a little bit. We can get within basically about 20% um, more weight for the laminated glass. So that is an option. The problem is it costs a ton of money. For the laminated glass, we're looking at roughly about 11,000. The acrylic, I can get it done for well under 2,000. So that probably is gonna be the defining factor. And the other thing with the laminated glass is you still have exposed edges on it where the pieces all come together, kind of like plywood with the different layers uh, together. And I have heard from people before, and I'm sure technology's improved and all that kind of stuff, but I have heard from people before that have used it, that have had eventually water weeping its way in to the, the laminates and creating cloudy issues there. Tempered glass, I don't think we're gonna do because that is going to be significant weight increase. And um, I can't quite justify that. Price is a little bit better than a laminate, but, it's, it's all weighing these things out and what's going to work best for us. Acrylic is probably the answer for cost, for um, ease of, of working. I can just get the sheets here, template it, and cut it myself and polish it all out and do all that stuff. We've done it before. Laminate, we have to get accurate files for um, sent to them, CAD files, and then they can make that. So there is a ease of work with the acrylic. There's a weight savings, quite a significant weight savings with acrylic and quite a cost savings with that as well. So I, I am leaning more that direction. That's what Max Cruz is using in Vietnam. And I think that's probably what we're gonna end up with. Getting back to work on the windows, I focused on the port side this time, beginning at the furthest forward window along the deck with the plan of working my way aft to see how far I could get that afternoon. On this day, I at least had the goal of removing the flange on the two largest windows, so we'd be able to begin blending in our fairing compound to the gel coat as soon as possible.
Comparing the two side by side, it was amazing what a difference cutting out that little bit of extra fiberglass made. Now, it was feeling like we could fully enjoy the views we were meant to. I'm finally done. Maybe not technically, because that guy's still there and same on the other side, but at least for this episode. So I have gone through and gotten the big windows on both sides, as well as the outer forward ones. You can see this very forward one I did manage to get out, but of course I had to like literally sit here and kind of go up to this because you can see the cabin top is very close there and doesn't allow a lot of room for movement. So on the starboard side here, again, this one is cut out almost all the way, but I just have to go back and do the top portion there. And then this inboard forward window. But now we should be able to go through and clean up this surface a little bit, kind of blend the edges together. <laughs> I can still see where we taped from our first priming. And then get these surfaces ready for primer as well. So pretty proud of my work, although there is one area that I kind of like biffed up more than I would like because it's the most noticeable area when you're going down the stairs into the guest hall. And you can see I was like going along nice there. And then like, what the hell is that leading into this corner? Oh, well, that's what Sanders and Farron compound are for but we've opened up the space, not in the way I expected, but it still looks a lot better. And I'm loving these new open windows. Again, just makes this space feel huge. And I'm so happy that we finally got those off and we can kind of start to see what our views are gonna look like from inside this bridge deck. All right, everyone, welcome to our new home. Yes, 100%. I love this 100 watt charger. What's up guys? Camping out in the apocalypse. Phone is fully charged thanks to you, Green. You guys, has anyone seen Joyce? She's supposed to be collecting berries. Give me just a second. This is normally where the girls meet their princess. Day four of us living out here. I'm still the one making sure we got food and clean drinking water while Joyce and Trixie are running around making sure they look good. If it wasn't for this thing, we'd be doomed. So whether you are preparing for the apocalypse or just an everyday thunderstorm that could take your power out, make sure to check out the Ugreen Power Roam 1200 watt power station. And viewers of ours are going to receive $200 off by using coupon and code, which can be found in our description box below. So make sure to go ahead and click that link.